Misunderstood, yeah. and um, I got some slack because right. people was like, "Yo, red, da da da." But at the time, I never listened to the mixtape. Right, 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 right. And then when you know the emails and the comments started to come, I said, "I right, let me listen to this mixtape." Mm-hmm. I listened to it, and honestly, bro, I mean, you know me, me and you have had conversations. Yeah, I don't yeah, agree yeah. with everything you say. Yeah, you know I'm, I mean? I'm done, bro. I thought it wasn't that bad. It was Corby Madden. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So, yeah, so I, that was something I wanted to ask. Just, I mean, I know you say, bro, me, yeah, you yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But um, there's some people who ask the question. What do you feel about people who ask that question? What do you feel about that question? Okay, well, the younger me used to get, you know, obviously more upset, feel a way about it. But the, the, the more mature me, like, I understand the hypocrisy of the public. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I understand that people get on Twitter and blast you for the same things that they do. Mm. You understand? So it's like people will say, well, when he's rapping, why is he, you know, why is he talking about, you know, um, body parts or something like that? Right. But they're right there in front of the TV every week when scandal comes on. Right. And when that part comes, when the president throw her on the wall and he's kissing her and they getting busy, they don't turn the TV. Wow. They turn it up. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. So I, I understand, one, I understand the hypocrisy yeah. of most people. Like, take for, take for instance, the thing that just happened recently with the brother from the Seahawks, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He made the, you know, he wowed out on the other receiver from the other team. Mm-hmm. And everybody got on t- Twitter talking about how he was out of line for coming at him like that. Right. But they called him the N-word, they got all in him. And they didn't even, so it's like, you're getting on him for telling another receiver, wide receiver in the game he plays, that you're, you're not good, I'm the best cornerback in the league. But you're calling him the N-word for doing it. Right. So you, and you, and most people are oblivious to where you don't see the hypocrisy in that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the type of country we live in. You know what I'm saying? So most people, most people are hypocritical. Now, but that, but let's 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 get past that. Let's get to the person that's like, they them. Everybody's bugging except them. They church and they cool. You know those Christians. Man. You know I'm holy. Everything, and they don't do no wrong. For those people, I always say I apologize uh, to you for you know whatever I do is coming in and invading you, and it makes you feel away. You understand what I'm saying? But it, I mean it's crazy because I. The same people that I just see that attack me on Twitter, you know, because like, you know, I said, I said one thing, those same people, I see them like the next day, they're tweeting how great a, another rapper is, and the song that they big enough, and that same song, he like, this you gone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you can't tolerate Corey, because instead of saying behind, he said the A word. You know what I'm saying? But you could tolerate this other guy that clowns your God. So he's not offensive to you. But oh my God, Corby is just, he's just too much. So, I mean, again, and I, and I hear you, bro. And, and, and what you're saying is right. There is a lot of hypocrisy, especially within the body. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, 
just how you said it. The same people who are saying, yo, Corey Red shirt would say that. Yeah. The same people watching Scandal. I've never watched the end of the And then you gotta realize the truth. Like, the reason why stuff like that is like, I can't even call it what off of Doug Bag. It just, it has no, stuff like that means nothing to me because you gotta realize, I've been hearing that for like my, my career. You know, I, I might not have a big famous career and I might not have gotten all the accolades and money, but I got a, a career as far as music that goes about 20 years. Mm -hmm. or moving into 20 years now, soon, you know what I'm saying? So, let me ask you this. so, so my thing is, yeah. people were saying that 20 years ago. Yeah, I, but I would say though, that since like, you know, resistance is futile, them days, mm -hmm. and I mean, he, to me, he got raw even mm -hmm. more. Raw. Right. And I'm saying there's certain things that Maybe you said on the last mixtape, like um, I think it's the ghetto, ghetto dreams, and joint where you mm -hmm. precise and oh, um, precise and yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I know you, uh, so I kind of, well, I believe I understand how you do music. Like you was mm -hmm. telling the story when you listen to the story that's being told, you're really just sharing the experience of some dude in the club. Why you say it, but like the the, the okay. bad result. You right. know what I mean? The end. Right, and that takes place. Right. All of y'all are doing that. Right. But it's real raw. Right. It's real explicit. And I think the issue is, is that some people might deem it inappropriate mm -hmm. for a Christian right. to use certain language. Like, you know, I'm in the club, da da da. Yeah. I respect but the I, ladies, but I'm right for the beans. You know what I mean? But, but, but like you said, yeah. in that particular show you're talking about. Right, I and, get and, it. And, right. and I made it, but, yeah. like I, but, that, I, but this is what I say though. Yeah. Sometimes, even though I know I made it clear, some people just don't want to understand stuff. Right. You understand? I can't, you, I, in other words, I can't let that drive me crazy. This is what I'm saying. When it comes to, when it comes to people feeling the way about my music, now think about this, remember, I'm not a big mega star. I'm not a big mega rapper. It's not like everywhere you go, Got it. You're bombarded with like, see, you can't escape certain of the big names because everywhere you turn, somebody's right by the car. You go, but I'm I'm so underground. I'm under the underground. So so these people that don't like my music, how are they hearing? It? But <laughs> I, I say this, man. Like, how are you hearing the music? You but gotta my, go no, and seek it out. But my thing is this: it's it's like I mean, you, you're saying what you're saying as far as being under the underground. But Red, you're a legend. You're a legend in Christian hip hop. Like, I just did an interview with Brinson, who's from Jacksonville, Florida. And one of the questions was, you know, who named some of the, the artists who um, inspired you, you know, whether secular or Christian hip hop. One, he said Stephen Wiley, and the second was you and Precise. And then he added a couple more. So, again, like, I think when somebody like yourself, whether you Realize it, recognize it or not, is held at a particular standard. Like, right. when you talk about Christian hip hop or have a conversation about the history of Christian hip hop, Corey Red and Precise have to be mentioned. You know what I'm saying? Like, resistance is futile and, uh, you know, um, what's the other joint? To the east, um, Mark of the East. Mark of the East. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These joints are classic mixtapes. Like these are joints that will never ever die. I, let me tell y'all, I first heard about. I heard about you. I got the first music. The first mixtape I got was a cousin of mine, and he, and I was in the UK in England. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, this cousin I'm talking about ain't nowhere near safe. Right, right. This dude's <laughs> like a demon, <laughs> sir. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he had a Corey Red mixtape and he gave it to me and said, yo, you heard of Corey Red? I was like, yeah. He was like, what? He said, yo, are you a Christian? Yo, hold it. <laughs> and I'm saying, so again, your ministry, I would say as a New York Christian hip hop artist, and not, I'm, not, I'm not just limiting you to New York. Right, right, I got you. As a New York Christian hip hop artist, you're the biggest. I mean, even if you go back to, to joints like when we put the resistance is futile out, yeah. that was like, that's like 03, right? 04, you going back like, like, like 10 years ago, right? If you go, there's interviews out there now, but even even that year, I'm having interviews with people saying, and as much as much good, you know, press and responses we get into this, you you know, you probably won't hear a resistance is futile too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, 
And if you listen to all, if you listen to all the music that I've ever done, everything sounds different. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but what you know? I said when you are artist, sometimes and the first time somebody meets an artist, sometimes it's like you know, whatever wherever they met you at, right there. Sometimes, sometimes they just they continually want that, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's not that's understandable, but it's like times change. You know what I mean? It's like and and. A lot, you know, for one, I mean, for one, even though I'm Christian, I never, me, myself, I never marketed what I do as Christian rap and Christian hip hop. I never marketed, I never, and you and you can go through all my music. I never, I never, you can go through all my music in the last 15 years. I never marketed myself. You know, it's just when you mention, when you mention Christ and you talk about God, then people always put that before your rap. Like if you if you if, if if a Muslim dude mentions something about Allah and his, they never make him a Muslim rap or Islamic rap. He can be a rap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even though people know he, they see the difference in his content. You know what I'm saying? Rakim, you know what I'm saying? Wu Tang putting out five percent music doctrine in their music. They was never considered five percent rap. You know, it's just when you, it's just the, the Christian guy always got to have the the, 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 the disclaimer in front of his that says he's the Christian rapper. Or, and, and, and you know, which to me have always been a, a, a two-edged sword. You understand what I'm saying? Because some people, a lot of a lot of the people that I reach are people that are not Christian. But sometimes when you say, hey, here goes a Christian rap, see that they think they know what it's about. And they won't even listen to it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? They worried about you just gonna be rhyming the way my grandmother talk or something. You know what I'm saying? And then on the other and on the other end, it's like the, the the Christian community has never fully, fully, really, fully embraced me. I was, I'm, I'm more like somebody that had to kind of tolerate because I was making an impact. You know what I'm saying? But I never fully, I never fully was like fully embraced. There's always been. There's always been a resistance and there's always been, even that other people didn't, people from afar might look and go, oh no, they're embracing you and what are you talking about? But I'm talking about the behind the scenes and just knowing what I know. And what was you saying? What was you saying? Brought that about just the style of how you did things? No, I think, well, that that, that, that goes into different right. things now. Now you're moving into people's insecurities. You know what I'm saying? Now you're moving into, you know, doctrines. Oh, they believe they believe the tribulation is going to be before the rapture, and we don't, so we don't like him. You know, you're getting the silly stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? That doesn't have anything to do with the music. You know? Uh, cool. Now, another thing, you created history. Because you're, and, I, and I'm sorry to keep branding you as a Christian rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, you know what I mean? But um, you would go down in history as the first, and I found it funny by the way, <laughs> the first Christian hip hop artist to have a parental advisory explicit <laughs> right, right, right. on his CD. Right. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I mean, well, I and, well, I, I did that because I know people have issues with the music. Right. right. That was just my way. Of, for the people that I know, what I'm putting out here is gonna be too much for you. Yeah. I don't want to fool you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I put a parental on to say, look, this is this is maybe not what you think. <laughs> maybe you might want to send little Johnny in the kitchen and out to play when you listen to this. I don't know. But I'm letting you know ahead of time. Yeah. Now if you disregard that and still listen to it. Right, right. Okay. What do you think the, the, the you know the Christian hip hop game, if that's what we want to call it? Mm -hmm. What what would what, what, what would you say it needs right now? What it needs, Corey Wright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright. Absolutely. <laughs> now, but on a serious side, I mean, the same issues in the, the music industry at large is the same in the subgenres too. You know what I mean? It needs it needs that more diversity, more originality. Uh, probably a lot of artists need a. Uh, more resources and et cetera. You know the same, I think, yeah. certain things I think are universal regardless of what genre you're talking about. Uh, who, who would you say, like when you was on your come up, who would you say like was a big inspiration to you? As far as artistic and music? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny because, it's funny, it's like, 
I started rhyming by default almost. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, as I was coming up, coming up in hip hop, listening to music, all the all the artists that were out there, I, I love I love their stuff, but I never I wasn't doing music also at the time. So it wasn't like, you know. But I mean, I get I get a little something from everything. Like I mean, like me, if you if you ever really see most artists, most rappers, they keep the mic in one hand the whole show. If they lefty, they in they left hand the whole show. <laughs> they righties and they right for 40 minutes. One, you know what I mean? Or when they performing it for the whole song, it's in that one hand. And I things like I took like say from like an old school dude like Melly Mel. I remember I was looking at him one time around and he always kept. Mike kept, you know what I mean? So stuff like that I incorporated in one shot. I said, okay, yeah, so you gotta be an Andy Dedrick, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, I, I, I switched the mic a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because I saw Melly Mel do it, you know what I mean? Right. So, this, you know, it's little, little things, things, yeah, little things like that I call, but yeah. my, my, when, I started, when, I, when I started doing music, my goal was even never to be the best. I just wanted to be the best me. What would you say was one of your most powerful moments as a minister? Mm -hmm. You know, because um, a, a lady, an older lady, recently uh, shared an experience that she had. Um, I think it was at the ER, and she said she wasn't really into Christian hip hop. She wasn't sure about the movement, but she went to the event for some reason. And I think you and Precise were there, mm -hmm. and she said um, that you know, you especially she said it was real hard. On the stage, like your delivery, you know, just real hip hop, and that's who you are, you know what I mean? And she, um, she said she was still kind of, but she said at the end, when there was an article, she said it blew her mind because you were so passionate about it. And she said, you, she said, some dude came up and she said, you literally hugged him and kind of just cried over him. And minister to him. I don't know if it was true or not. <laughs> Same yeah, but you know what I mean? But again, that was just a side yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just saying, you know, what would you say was one I of think, the most I think, powerful jumps? I think one of the one of the things that touched me the most a lot of time is I remember one time we was doing a show down in Orlando mm -hmm. at this club called The Wave. And me and Precise got off stage and this sister came up and she was like she said, hey, um, hey guys, how you doing, you know? She was a little apprehensive, but you know, you know, you know me, I'm not a, when I get off stage, I don't do the Hollywood thing. I'm real approachable, right, right. I vibe with the people, you know, even if, even if I want to beat the promoter up when I finish dealing with the people, right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it, it's something he did, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just joking, but you know, I vibe with the people. So, she came up and she said, I just want y'all to know I was really, you know, touched by what y'all did today. And even my friends don't know, you know, I was on my way to go home, I was gonna go kill myself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she said, but my people said, yo, just come with us, you gotta see these dudes right here, you gotta see these dudes. She said, they be talking all this like y'all, she like, if they all that, why well, don't know them? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So she said she came to the show, she looked at it, you know, she got touched and everything. She said, she said things were going on during the show. And even during the show, you know, people would, you know, she said, I still feel like I'm gonna go home and do this, you know what I'm saying? She said, then you and your man, you know, y'all came up, and you know, and then after y'all did the music, y'all was sharing and everything, and she was like, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm good now, you know, I feel like I can live, you know what I'm saying, and stuff. And I got, I have so many instances where people say they were gonna kill themselves, you know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody told me a dude in Finland was listening to some dude's music out the window in the next building, you know what I'm saying, through the radio show, when he was getting ready to kill himself, and then, you know, and then he came to the guy, and, you know, so when you when you hear things like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Or you hear or you hear somebody tell you like this once a week, a dude in Arizona, they been driving them to go drop them off. When they got there, they was like, yo, go ahead, see you later. He's like, nah, man, take me back home. But you, you made us drive you over here to take you home. You told me, nah, and I was listening to your man rhyming while he was over here. Yeah, like, no, I was gonna go meet my dudes. He's gonna pull his own robbery. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was just listening to the stuff your man was talking about, and I ain't even with it. I'm come home. So when you when you when you affecting people's lives like that, and then there's of course the ultimate. Is some might say, you know, you were instrumental, right. and and me, leading me to the ultimate of the salvation of Christ. Yeah. You know, those are the things that make the adversity. 
you know what I'm saying? You're willing to bear because a lot of times, most of my adversity comes from people who's already having bound. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You gotta think about that. Most okay. of it, not all of it, but most of it comes from people who's already having bound. So what I'm saying is, I'm willing to take the lashes from 10,000 heaven bound people to go get 10 people. That's the only way to destruction. You know, it's worse. You know what I'm saying? What's next for it, right? Ministry wise, as an artist, you know, just as the man for it, what, yeah, what, what um, do you look out for? Because you do still have a fan base, you know yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 I mean? yeah. I got some music coming in. I had to take care of some issues with family, you know, health issues. Uh, with family and stuff, and that's coming along all right. So I kind of had to put family first. I was doing some just regular stuff, you know, and uh, the everyday life stuff. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that when you're an artist traveling and going over with, it seems boring, you know what I mean? Because you're used to the rush of the moments and the, the running for the airplane and all that. Right. So I've been, you know, just some. Living a regular life and it's so boring, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm about to jump back into I'm about, I got I mean I I, I always do music. I, I I create music year round. Yeah. True. Like I never do music just when it's time to do a project. Right. Like I'm always vibing on different concepts and songs. So I got music, I got songs, I got stuff in my bag. When I leave you, I'm gonna go work on it. You know what mm. I mean? I'm doing some things to try to build the resources. I got a meeting to have somebody to get some resources. So that I can actually, when I put something out, I can actually let everybody know it's out and make it available. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and I'm also about to get into um, some photography. And I'm, I want to get into the other side of the camera. You know? right. So I'm about to go to school for photography and filmmaking. Nice. Get my documentary on and stuff like that. Mm. And, um, and and finally get these books out. That's been one of my hardest. That's been one of my hardest challenges over the years, man. You know, and I've been challenged with God to do these books. Right. And I'm, I, I really now realize I gotta take time and uh, I gotta get these books out, you know what I'm right. saying? And so while I'm doing all those things, I got other endeavors to get the money mm -hmm. so that you can have the resources to put out what you have excellent and build your team, teamwork, make your dream work, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah. No doubt, all right. It was great chopping it up with you, bro. We could have like, I think we gotta do like part three, part <laughs> two, three, four, whatever. And I mean, because this is so much that I really wanted to ask, but yeah, um, yeah. you know, time and everything else. Time and the essence, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, definitely, I'm always a fan. You know that. Yeah, yeah. You know and um. Now you want to, I mean, you, you've been supportive, but it's, it, you know, the love go both ways because right. when nobody was rocking with you when you came on the scene, That's right. I didn't, you know, I, I embraced you as a brother, yo, whatever you need help. Yep. And then, it's, and it's good that I tre didn't treat you like that because right. now that the table's turning, a lot of circles that used to deal with me, you know what I'm saying, have banished me from the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you always come over to the island of Patmos or the <laughs> rowboat sometimes and say, yo, you know you good, you need something in your commissary, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and I appreciate you and love you for that, man. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, man. Real recognized, real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Red, love yo, you, bro. That's yo, all. Yo, we'll definitely. Absolutely. You'll see more from Red, man, 2014. Absolutely. And it's all going to be on, exclusively on Kingdom Top Absolutely. Media. Absolutely. And also, also look out for the, the reinstallment of the Red Flags blog. You know yeah, what I'm definitely. You know what I'm Coming saying? to get the top these political media. prophetic blogs out and let y'all really know what's going on. Yeah. What's going on in the Ukraine, how it affects you down in Peachtree in Atlanta. <laughs> You know, and these things that are happening around the earth that affect us here in America and in your local communities. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, yeah. there it is, y'all. Kingdom Top Media, baby. Much love. All right, peace. Kingdom Top Media. Kingdom Top Media.